Okay, well, we are back again for the continuation in the Hollywood Hair series. Today is the comb out of Hedy Lamarr's style, which I'm going to just show you a quick reminder of what we did last week. So one of my most favorite women ever. Uh, this is a really versatile hairstyle for someone with a little thicker hair. If you don't want to center part, you can choose to take one side or the other and roll it so you don't have a center part, but she did. Also, just noting, this doll has bangs, so the stand-up curls are not as far forward as they might be given no bangs. This is pretty much, this hair is pretty close to uh, the hairstyle that she has, uh, less layered though. So these top ones are a little longer than what is here. Uh, very simply, we have in the top, we have what they uh, asked for was two rows of stand-up curls parted at the center and rolled down towards the ear. Uh, I opted to use a curling iron and make wide rows, uh, a single row wide and down to the ears to get the same effect, uh, followed by the pin curls at the bottom and nape area, leaving a smooth crown as would be popular in the 40s. So, um, and it's also very versatile for not having to work too hard to achieve this style, especially if you're trying to do it on yourself. Uh, reminder, we did stand-up curls down to the ear in the Demo use the brains. In the diagram, it does show that there's also a stand-up curl behind the ear, but I've opted to not do that for ease of creating on yourself. If you wanted to, especially with a curling iron, you could take and angle one more um, stand-up curl right behind the ear or even leading the curls at more of a diagonal rather than a straight column and then for the back we just did two rows grabbing and curling forward toward the face from the center and let it Everything's been clipped and cooled. If you were doing this for yourself or someone else, you only need to clip and cool until the uh, curls are cold to the touch. And I also chose to, after setting, spray with a little bit of the Style Fixer. It's a finishing spray. Normally, I might opt for the Volume Fixer, but the Style Fixer is what I had handy. Uh, and now we come to the slightly boring part of pulling pins. Not the most exciting on a Sunday afternoon, but necessary. And just coming in here, I'm not worried about anything being combed out in any way just yet. I might take and hand stretch the curls, but nothing overwhelming. We did all of the stand-up curls on base, meaning that the curl itself sits right on the base of the hair and that adds more volume to the style and more curl all the way down to the root 
if you were to curl off base, you won't get the volume that you're going to get from curling on base. Once more, that's curling, so you can see this section of hair. This here is the base of the curl. When you curl on base, you get volume. If you curl off base, it will lay flatter to the head. Also, reminding everyone that when we parted for these stand-up curls, I did a zigzag in between all of them to avoid a harsh roller mark. Um, and this would work uh, wet set, dry set, um, foam rollers, if that's something that you want to use. And then we're just going to take out the curls in the back. I know you can't see a thing, but it doesn't seem to me that it is really worth looking at just yet. As I'm just, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm literally just pulling pins. And there's not that many of them. I I think if I counted, uh, we did a grand total of 24 curls. So that gives you a little idea of what uh, little effort we have to put in to creating this style. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I've kind of run my hands through here is to Use my Denman brush, the seven row Denman brush, and we're just going to start combing through. I'm going to come down a little bit so you can kind of see a little better how I start the combing out process. Keep my little heater. Uh, so it's just because we worked to ensure the smoothness of the rollers, we shouldn't have tangles in the hair and this is just a matter of coming out and using my hand I don't know if you can see that um, I'll come around this side just so you can kind of see like I'm going to use my hand as a bit of a base to brush over and for now, I'm leaving it. We're not, that's not the finished look, but just. Okay, give me a second here. Okay, I apologize. My uh, phone started telling me things that it was trying to not keep track of my situation. So, back to what we were doing, which is combing out using the Denman brush. This is really just to make sure that everything is thoroughly brushed through uh, and because we've set and I'm going to call solidified the style by letting it cool down, it's not going to, I'm not going to accidentally brush out curl. You can see like all I have to do is shake it up a little bit, it'll come right back. It's not going to stay like this. This isn't the final look, but it's just giving you the idea of what it takes to brush through. Now, if I were doing this on a real person, I would be approaching from behind the head at this point and brushing over my hand. However, uh, I want to show what I'm doing so I have to modify. If I were to come around and do it the way I would be doing it normally, let me see if I can just come through, take it, kind of brushing it over my hand, trying to get a little order out of the chaos, but not worried about how it's totally going to sit. Now for this hairstyle because it's still meant to be a bit loose and casual. 
I am going to just, instead of using Brilliantine, as I've been known to do, today for shine and control, we're just going to use a little bit of the Oil Wonders Amazonian Maru Maru Oil. So, just one, two, three, add four. And then we're going to emulsify it all through the hands and just run into the hair, running the fingers through and especially catching the ends of the hair. And we want it to be shiny and curly, not dry and fuzzy. So using a little oil or uh, pomade, depending on your hair texture, can really help to ensure a little less of the uh, dry and fluff and just putting it through. And I do this a lot on my hair on the ends when I'm putting oil is grabbing the ends and rubbing my hands together so that it can really really soak into that. And now I have to wipe my hands off or I won't be able to hold a brush at all. The fun parts but you can see even with just this rough setup things are starting to in some ways look like a hairstyle um, and I'm gonna kind of take a, a little a little bit of liberties with what this hairstyle looks like uh, just due to the fact that it seems in the picture and I'll show you that she has pulled the front back so possibly with a comb uh, possibly with pins so we're going to do our best to mimic that as well we want volume, but I don't want to have uh, big 1960s hair. She just had that uh, not too long ago. Um, so now I'm taking my little bristly brush, my nylon bristly brush, and just working through mostly to distribute the oil so I can get the style and the look that I want, get all the shine, get the removing the the dry ends and the little bits of fuzz and helping to secure the look. And since this is once more like most of the styles in this series, it's not meant to be uh, an overwrought style. I could if I really really wanted to take and start working over my hand, moving, moving things around, creating a, a wave as it falls into place, and doing something a little more structured, but that's really not what we're aiming for in this style. So I'm just going to take my little pick comb here and take the front section and twist Let's see if it's doing what I want it to do and it looks decent to me Grabbing my bobby pins that I didn't realize I was going to use. Sometimes you just make decisions on the fly. Okay, I'm going to see if we can turn so you can see what I'm doing with this section. Alright, let's see. Bobby pin in my mouth, which don't do that if you have real clients or uh, friends who you're working on for yourself. 
Stick a pin in your mouth. Nobody cares. So now that I have it gathered together, I'm just going to twist it. And taking my pin, coming through, straight in, and straight down. And throwing another one in. That's not a very good pin, but coming the other way. Making a little X to secure the hair. And then just breaking this up a little bit so we have a little bit more play in the curl. And I'm going to give it a little spritz. I'm using, for a light touch, I'm using the Volume Rose Oil Wonders. I know they're backwards, but you can go back and look at what... Um, in previous posts, uh, when I was beginning this series, I did post a lot of the, the products that I was going to be using. So if you can't make out what it is that I just used, is uh, I would encourage you to look back at that post where I had the, the list of items and products that I would use to create these styles and that might help so if there was something you're going I I missed that entirely I didn't catch what was going on I didn't see what she was talking about okay so now I'm going to try to approximate similar subsection of hair on this side and gather it all together comb it out be impressed with myself for my my balayage skills and this time instead of combing uh, it's still gonna be gone in a backwards fashion but now we're going to be on the right hand side so, set the piece hold it take a pin and don't open the pin straight in and turn and down followed by a second pin straight in turn and down in a crosswise fashion to help hold that hair secure and like we did on the other side just kind of futz with the curls break these up a little bit so they are not just one big curled mass they're probably going to try to stay somewhat together but just uh, it's kind of like just giving it a little bit more fun and excitement and just taking that front and figuring out a nice way to present it and a little spritz with the hairspray just to help hold things in place I'm not so then going to turn to the back of the head and this is basically just let's see if I can show a little bit better what I'm doing and I'm just using my my little pick comb here and encouraging the curl to come and play if you're doing this for yourself kind of best guess it you could even use your fingers to just kind of pull the pull the curls and organize into whatever fashion you feel suits you and your style also you may notice that I am bringing some of the hair 
that was originally in the crown section of the stand-up curls into the back so that we have more uniformity in curl structure throughout. And then because I can see what's going on, I get to adjust curls in whatever fashion I feel is going to be the most flattering and and the most simple. I'm not going to fight the curls. The whole idea for this style is that it is a relatively casual idea. Nothing complicated, nothing terribly overwrought. A little more hairspray. And just kind of using my hand to sculpt and hold things in place. You can also, if you want uh, to calm down any of the little flyaways, is to use the end of a tail comb. Just kind of grab and smooth because you're less likely to have things stick to a tail comb than, say, your fingers if you're concerned about that. And fix the bangs, which I will show you in a minute since they didn't really have anything done to them. I just want to make sure that they're in good working order and now we can see the finished product and depending on how big your curls were to begin with because i did use a large one inch barrel curling iron so we're getting a little bit more uh, body and bounce than maybe you want and in that case then you might want to use a smaller curling iron or if you're doing it with, say, foam rollers, smaller rollers. But now you can see the final product. There's sometimes I can look and go, oh, there it is. And of course, I'll be posting this final look on my page once I get some good, good pictures. So just kind of for comparison, ignoring the fact that there's bangs. Um, I think we're fairly close. I think it would be closer if I had chosen a smaller barrel curling iron, but this one's really easy to create. There's not a lot of work in it. I don't have to backcomb anything. Just a quick twist here in the front just to, and then you could even take, if you wanted to go a little further and a little more 1940s looking, you could take that twist and turn it into a roll. Um, I don't think that was necessary for this, uh, for, for these purposes, uh, but this gives you a nice, simple hairstyle that uh, can be universally flattering, um, and if you don't feel comfortable, like I said, with a middle part, move one of those rolls to go the other way. So whether it's, you want a right side part, then you would just roll at the part, everything, basically everything from the part rolls down to the chin. So if your part is a little further to one side, then it would just roll all the way down to the chin. You just use the part as your dividing line. So there we have it, a little inspiration from Hedy Lamar. I think it turned out well. And we will be back next week to do another lovely lady. Uh, since this week we opted for the... My brains keep leaving. Since uh, we opted to do a curling iron set, because next week will more than likely be a wet set. So possibly pin curls, possibly rollers, depending on which lovely lady I choose to feature in this next week. So 
So I look forward to seeing you then. And we'll catch you in, uh, in a week next Sunday at 2. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks. Bye.